Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden and in this video we are going to be looking at the top five ways in which you guys can help birds in your own garden at this time of year as we approach spring. Now this applies to anyone watching this wherever they are around the world so this one should hopefully appeal to a lot of you out there. So without further ado let's look at how you can help birds in your garden this spring. So before we get cracking guys I'd just like to say if you are new to the channel welcome along and if you are please hit that subscribe button it goes a long way to helping spread these videos which obviously then spreads the message of helping wildlife in your own back garden which is of course the whole reason I started this channel almost three years ago so video to come on that one but yes it really does help with the Google Analytics it helps spread all these videos around the world because I try to keep my content as broad as possible so it appeals to as many people as possible and helps as much wildlife as possible. So yes, do go back to the home page as well and hit the little notification bell and then you will get notified every time I post a new video which is twice a week, Wednesday and a Sunday at 6 p.m. So loads and loads of cool stuff to come from the channel for you guys. So with that to one side, Let's have a look at the five best ways you can help birds in your own garden this spring. So number one, it's just behind me. <laughs> you might have guessed it. It might seem blindingly obvious, but put a bird box up. You wouldn't believe how many birds you can attract to your own garden. Obviously, depending on where you are around the world, there are different species, but here in the UK, you can certainly expect to get blue tits, great tits, robins, pied wagtails, um, starlings, jackdaws, barn owls, a whole plethora of birds, kestrels as well if you're on a, a field edge or you're, you own a farm or a piece of land. So there's so, so many birds you can uh, help attract to these boxes, in particular species such as our starling and house sparrow, which are declining and are both on the red list here in the UK. I know many of you guys in the States often say sparrows, starlings, <laughs> we'll send you some um, but yeah they're not doing very well here in the UK they are declining because they are losing a lot of their nesting sites as we absolutely airtight all our new properties uh, a whole discussion for another day but it really does frustrate me and of course you can attract my all-time favorite bird the house martin to your house by putting up nest boxes which is what I did on my previous house I managed to get 14 breeding pairs on a mid terrace which I think was brilliant I absolutely loved it and it's great to see that they are still there all from putting up one box and then one pair came and attracted another uh, 13 pairs in the fullness of time after about four years so really really great success story that was but also you can attract swifts as well and also um, swallows is the other one I was thinking of two obviously they are an open cup nesting bird so they like an open cup that they can get in on top of the house martins it's a closed cup with a little hole Anyway, I'm not going to explore all the different types of boxes today. Um, I have partly covered that in videos previously on how to make your own bird boxes. So I'll put a link to one of those videos at the end of this one so that you guys can have a go. And not so easy to make your own house martin and swallow and swift boxes, but although you can do them. Um, but the more common species that are easier for you guys just involve six, pin six inch ply or six inch timber basically. Um, and you can make robin boxes, blue tip boxes, um, great tip boxes. So a really good way to have a project to have a go out with the kids. And uh, yeah, I'll put a link into those at the end of this one. Obviously, if you're looking to buy bird boxes, check out the Wild Your Garden online shop. And we do have a whole range of bird boxes for you to choose from. So number one, get some boxes in your garden. So I should just say, guys, on the back of that point I've just made, obviously you might be asking when's the best time to put boxes up. Well, obviously now is fine. As long as you're not putting them up too close to many other nesting birds, then you're absolutely fine. As long as you're not disturbing them, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, I won't go into spacings and everything else in this video because I have covered that in some of the previous box making videos. So yes, do check out that one at the end of this one. But yeah, as for when to put them up, just keep putting them up all year because things like the house sparrow and a lot of our tit species will have two to three broods each year. So they might not necessarily use the box in this first brood, but I have known them to move. I had a great tit in that box there um, two years ago, last summer actually. and. Um, 
it then moved and used an open fronted robin box which was in this big dog rose that i cut down which i should say i am back in my own garden by the way guys for those of you that have been long time subscribers to the channel you will have seen some of my previous garden tours which i did well, a couple of years ago now but because i've been working all over the country it's been very very difficult to keep on top of my garden and bring you some videos which i'm hoping to do more of this year i've been very busy been putting in some more dog proof fencing or some dog proof fencing because i quickly learned that having three large dogs and a wildflower meadow and a wildlife pond down there you can just see um another video to come that's going to be quite a bit bigger soon but <laughs> Um, yes, doesn't go too well with having large dogs, so I've had to section off part of the garden if I want any kind of formality to the meadow and the wildlife pond without it being just wrecked by the dogs. So yes, that's what I've been up to. And February as well, I have been flat out making a whole new wildlife garden uh, in the front garden, which is another video to come in the coming months. So stay tuned for that one. 20 square meters and I've made a whole plethora of habitats in that so hopefully one that should appeal very much to you guys so yes lots to come from the channel but just wanted to talk to you about when to put the boxes up as i say any time of year is fine as long as you're not disturbing the existing birds such as the house sparrows which live pretty much all year in my big buddleia just to my right so yes just wanted to cover that point guys so now let's look at number two so tip number two is get some nesting material up for the birds. I know in the natural world they'll be finding as much material as they can, which obviously they will do, but I think it's always good to give them a bit of a helping start. So what I've done, I've got an existing fat feeder, which a uh, fat ball feeder, which you might be familiar with, some of you might already have, and these are available again on the online shop along with many feeders. Um, but what I've done is I've got some sort of straw and thatch um, and just sort of soft material, if you like, at the bottom and then the top half <laughs> has been provided by Mr Big Nose aka Siri who has very kindly donated some of his fur for the top part of this feeder which is a really really good example of what you can put within a bird box obviously in the natural world a lot of the tit species in particular and many many species actually will use things such as moss but dog hair actually if you've got a big hairy dog like I have then dog hair is a very good way of providing a natural resource for these birds so yes uh, Luna's not very happy she's inside at the moment because trying to film a video with Luna running around my feet is not too easy but Siri is uh yeah <laughs> bless him he's getting he's getting on now in years Siri he's uh he must be about 15 and um yeah he's uh he's not exactly coping too well his his back legs are going sadly so we don't think he's got long left there you go Let's see if I can show him just pan round there he is <laughs> absolutely gorgeous dog he's uh He's part um, Alaskan Malamute and part German Shepherd. And yeah, he's an absolute beauty. And he loves following me around the garden as well. <laughs> so yes, number two, get some feeders up in your garden for the birds, provide some nesting material. I'm sure they'll be very, very thankful. So tip number three, and with Siri still in shot, <laughs> Siri is sort of blocking my next point. Ah, there it is, take a quick look. No, it's gone. <laughs> is to provide water for the birds as well. Now, I know we are not in the hottest part of the year by any means yet, but it's important to provide water for birds all year round, regardless whether it's hot, cold, spring, autumn, 24 seven because they need to bathe on a daily basis as well as drink uh, to keep all their feathers in tip top condition. So the best way you can do that, get yourself like one of these old, uh, this was an old stone um, bird bath actually that uh, somebody donated to me when I was doing garden for them. And um, yeah, it's proven very, very attractive to a lot of birds. I've had a lot of birds drinking and bathing in this and it's obviously very shallow. Um, it's only about two inches deep, so it's absolutely perfect. And it's a great way of providing that natural resource for them. A pond is obviously the next best thing you can do, but if you haven't got room for a pond, providing water in the form of one of these is absolutely fantastic. You can, of course, use anything. You can use an old washing up bowl, as long as you put some stones in it so that things don't fall in and get, and get trapped, things like hedgehogs. Um, you can use an old bowl from your kitchen 
Um, you can use an old plant pot tray and just fill it up. All I would say is just remember to keep it clean, guys. So um, clean it on a regular basis to stop any uh, kind of infections or anything like that, any mould building up. So yes, just clean it out on a, on a you know kind of daily basis if you can. Um, but obviously they are a great way of attracting lots and lots of birds to your garden. I get seeing a pigeon on this is uh, quite a sight. <laughs> Pigeons take up most of it, and I've actually had around about eight to ten starlings on this as well in the winter time, having a communal bath, which can be a bit of a raucous. So I actually had one starling once kickbox a blackbird out of the bath just to have a bath itself. So. <laughs> Yes, very entertaining. So providing a water source for birds at this time of year is just as vital as providing the food and the nesting habitats for them. So tip number four is keep feeding your birds. Now I know I've spoken about this recently on my top tips out wildlife in March, but I think it's absolutely key because there are still so many birds and particularly nowadays with our garden birds, a lot of them have become, become reliant upon our food that we provide for them. So I think with ever increasing pressures on the countryside, the intensification of agriculture, many, many, many factors, it's even more important to provide food for these birds. So you can use something like this, which is a six port feeder bit of a punch up going on I think in the buddleia between the house sparrows <laughs> and um, in it I have our very own <laughs> Bulgy Garden bird feed which you can obviously get from the online shop now I'll show you a bit of what's inside one of these bags I've got two bags here with me this is a special blend of seed that Siri he doesn't actually enjoy eating but if you can see that all right is a special blend that I've had produced, which includes many, many ingredients that is an absolutely brilliant resource for so many birds. And the, what I wanted to do was create a product that was uh, beneficial for feeders and as a ground feed as well. So you don't have to buy loads and loads and loads of different foods for, or different seed types for your feeders and for the ground. This has got all sorts of in it like red millets, sunflower hearts, suet pellets. Um, I would just say it has got a few uh, peanut granules in it, but they are granules. So the only problem with feeding uh, at this time of year coming into the nesting season, obviously you don't want to be providing whole peanuts for the birds because they might take a whole peanut back and try and give it to their chicks, things like jays and woodpeckers in particular. So, uh, which they can choke on. So if you're gonna feed peanuts, it's absolutely fine, but crush them up or get um, sort of granular peanuts, something like that if you're going to. Don't provide them in the, the sort of the, you used to be able to buy the old netted bags. You don't see so many of those these days, but normally they are available as whole peanuts. But you can, of course, buy crushed granular peanuts as well. So you could use a mix like that. Another favorite, and one that I put down the bottom of the garden, you can't quite see it, but uh, I've got another feeder down there, one up near the house, near the house sparrows, where they absolutely live. Uh, and the other thing that I feed are sunflower hearts, which are absolutely loved by the goldfinches. Things like the goldfinches, siskins, uh, bullfinches will eat these as well. Absolutely gorgeous birds, the bullfinch. But yes, sunflower hearts are another bird food that I supply in the garden. I just simply feed that. That's all I feed. Oh, tell a lie. <laughs> I use fat balls as well, which the starlings really, really love. So I use uh, the fat, I use the birdseed mix, and I use the sunflower hearts as well. Again, all these available on the online shop, guys. Um, and I won't go through. For more information, check out a video I made a couple of years ago in the garden about the best foods you can feed your birds as a whole feature length video on that. So I'll put a link to that one at the end of this one. But point number four is keep feeding your birds. So point number five and my final point is provide cover for birds. Now there are many, many, many ways you can do this, but in essence, and I'll try to keep this brief, birds need cover. So if, the, if you have birds in your own garden, which hopefully you do, most of them no doubt will be songbirds, songs like the, um, the blackbird, song thrushes, although less and less of those these days, but you'll have thrushes, you'll have blackbirds, you'll have robins, um, you'll have lots and lots of tit species as well, no doubt. And all of these birds, every single one of them, 
can become prey to some of our bigger predators. Things, for example, like the sparrowhawk here in the UK, which is often classed as a bit of a garden pest. I completely disagree with that argument. I think they're an absolutely important part of our ecosystem and it really frustrates me the way people label them as a, um, a problem species within the garden, shall we say, because they are just doing what they have evolved to do, which is catching smaller birds to eat. They themselves obviously have chicks to feed this time of year, or very soon anyway, so I think it's uh, yeah a little unfair to just ignore them completely. So I know it's hard to see your beloved robins, blackbirds, sparrows, tits being taken by these birds, but it's all part of nature. Uh, and obviously in the States you'll have things like Cooper's hawks, sharp shinned hawks, uh, roadside hawks. So all of these are similar to our sparrow hawk we get here in the UK. And they will of course take garden birds with precise agility. They are incredible birds if you ever watch them. The amount of times I've been wheeling a wheelbarrow when I've been working through uh, in someone's back garden, I've been wheeling it down a side passage in between two houses and one has just gone straight over my head. And they are incredibly agile birds and there's no wonder they are an apex predator in a garden when it comes to the birding world. So yes, cover is absolutely therefore vital and you can do it in many forms. As I say, you can provide things like this ivy which is absolutely great hopefully i'm going to get this year some wrens nesting in there the wrens have been looking around the ivy ivy and trees it's a story for another day but i do keep that one trimmed just above the top of the screen there so that i can manage it it does still then of course flower and berry um, and provide that cover as well and provide obviously a larval food plant for the holly blue butterfly of which this is a very good garden for once i saw six or seven in flight at once in this garden so the most i've actually ever seen in a garden because i have holly and ivy the two larval food plants it's double brooded the two larval food plants that the holly blue survives on so ivy and trees i keep mine trimmed uh, a video for another day as i say because they can cause problems for trees uh, as they get up through and right to the crown and the canopy uh, into the top of the canopy of a tree um, but ivy is one way you can do it you can also quick sneak preview here guys I told you I've been busy I've been making a little mini woodland border and for those of you that aren't following me already I strongly recommend you follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well obviously just search Joel Ashen and Wild Your Garden I have two accounts on each <sighs> takes a lot to keep on top of this social media lark but I have been posting some recent pictures of my little mini woodland border and as I speak I don't know if you noticed that, but everything went dead quiet and a lot of birds were flushed into the air. There's still pigeons flying around, which means there was a sparrowhawk in the area. It's probably long gone now because they're very quick, as I've already spoken about. Usually when everything goes quiet, and in particular here in the UK, you hear that the, the blue tits do a particular call and you can hear them now calling from the... That's <laughs> That's kind of their alarm call. So they're still on alert. Anyway, yes, so sorry. Sparrowhawk, no doubt, just went through, which is absolutely brilliant, case in point. Um, so providing cover either in the form of the ivy, which is great, or this mini woodland border that I've just created. Again, full video coming on this, guys, so don't panic. But I've planted a lot of shrubs in here, which are going, which is going to provide cover for the birds, nesting potential, and a whole host of other habitats as well for insects frogs toads newts that i get in the garden all in the log sacks everything else anyway you're not allowed to see that just yet because i've not finished <laughs> uh, but the third way you can do it is pro by providing climbers now even if you've only got just a couple of fence panels or you've got a bare bit of wall grow some climbers up a wall because i've known entire colonies of the fabulous house sparrow uh, reside within a massive clematis or a pyracantha or um, a buddleia for example uh, but I know buddleia is not a climber but get some climbers up your bare walls and fences you can really maximize the habitat in your garden by making the most of your vertical spaces another video to come on how to do that in 
another video but uh, yes i could go on this video could become two hours long quite easily which i would love i'd love to speak to you guys for that long but i think it's great to keep these videos concise uh, incidentally i would be interested to know what you guys think is a decent video length for any of the videos that you watch is it kind of five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes an hour <laughs> let me know your thoughts i'd be interested to know obviously you guys are the viewers and uh, yeah it'd be great to know that kind of information so tip number five get some climbers in your garden get some shrubs in your garden and do check out uh, i can't put three videos at the end of this one as a link anyway just search on the youtube channel or look back in my previous videos i have done a video on the best 15 shrubs uh, that you can use in your own garden for wildlife and what to plant so yes do check that video out to give you some ideas on more of the detail uh, in which i go as to why and how you should cho choose trees and shrubs for your own garden Whew, too much information to share with you guys anyway i'll take the next 10 years trying to show you anyway that's about it for this video guys i really do hope you've enjoyed it i hope you can get out there get making some habitats for your precious birds wherever you are around the world as always let me know in the comments below what you've seen what you've got what you've been doing for wildlife i would love to hear from you and i promise those of you that have been following for a long time i promise i will be releasing uh, all the ponds that you guys have sent me photos and videos of in a video in the not too distant future it's taken me a long time to get around to it i've still got well it's not quite thousands of videos but dozens of videos i'm trying to work on to edit from last year to still bring you guys but one that i really want to bring you is the pond videos where you've sent in all the pictures and uh video as well in in some cases of the wildlife ponds you've created off the back of this channel which i think is just brilliant again just showing the importance of spreading the message of conservation on your own doorstep and of course the wild your garden channel so without any more information <laughs> spilling from my mouth <laughs> i've got tons to do so i'm going to get on and uh yeah get some more videos edited for you guys this afternoon but i hope you've enjoyed the video please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and give the video a like and obviously i will be very very sure to bring you more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in your own garden in videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon